What's your name? Philip. How are you? Oh, it's pretty good, you know. Um, so glad to be on. Glad to glad to you know actually talk to you. Um, oh, of course, Philip. So recently, I've been with my girlfriend, and uh, she pulled this big thing out called Hank the Tank. It's about ten inches long, and it really makes me feel bad about myself. I don't know how to tell her to get rid of it. Hank the Tank. Is yeah. that the name of, 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 of a... I'm, I'm getting the sense that you're implying that's the name of a, of a sex toy of hers. It's very phallic. A 10-inch long phallic instrument that she uses for her own personal sexual pleasure. Yes. Philip, look, the whole thing of, you know, telling her to get rid of it. I mean, that your 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 problem is that, you know, this thing is making you insecure. You can't just tell her to get rid of it. That's not that's not within your your jurisdiction at all. Oh, you're right. I guess I just It just doesn't seem right. Doesn't I mean, seem I, right. I, I, Why I, do you say it doesn't what, what do you mean it doesn't seem right? I never thought I would use something like that. <laughs> I mean, oh god, I got showered. I've never been showered before. What does showered mean? Well, um, once in a while, when you do some stuff, there's some liquid that comes she out. Peed on and, you. Your, your wife yeah, she, peed on you. I, yeah, I, I, I assume you're you're making this all up, but your wife peed on you. No, no, I did not make this up. This actually happened two weeks ago. Really? I, Tell me I, every last detail. Every last detail? Yeah, I want to know, like, what was, oh, did we, it feel hot? Where did she pee on you exactly? Well, I mean, it was, it was hot, and then it kind of got cold because it was cold in the room, so it kind of evaporated a little bit. But, okay, um, that makes sense. We'll check with our science people about that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it was just like I said. She pulled that thing out. I got jealous. And I, I don't know how to bring it up to her. I'd really like to get it out of the house. But you said don't do that. That's wrong. What do you? Why? Why? Why are you so concerned with getting this thing out of the house? If I were her, I would be. See, here's the thing: is like this. You're. You're. You know. Look, I don't think your wife is gonna leave you because this is your wife or your girlfriend. Girlfriend. Look, your girlfriend's not going to leave you because you have a tiny penis, all right? Because she's stuck with you so far. But your girlfriend might leave you for trying to, you know, control her and, and what she can and can't do, and, and you know, with 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 her own life and with her own, you know, uh, fulfilling her own sexual needs. I'd leave you over that more than I would you having a tiny penis. Fair enough, Gecko. We'll keep Hank the Tank. I mean, I guess that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely, man. See, that's the thing is you're 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 gonna make it much worse for yourself because you're feeding into your own insecurity. Whereas, like, look, having a tiny penis is like that's you know, that's just who you are. And and look, she stayed with you long enough. She she obviously cool doesn't care. She's still with you. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay, I'll let you go. Thank you, sir. Of course, man. You have a good rest of the night. No, you too. Call from Nathan. Nathan. Hey. How are you, Nathan? Oh, I'm doing all right. How are you? How have you sinned, Nathan? Well, about uh, ten years ago. I cheated on my wife. Mm, you cheated on your wife. Yeah. And are you two still together? Yes, we are. You are? So she forgave yes. you? Well, we're working on that because this, uh, she just recently found out. She only found out recently? Yeah, just uh, probably 
just a little under two weeks ago. And did you reveal it to her or did she find out on her own? She found out on her own. How did she find out? So the husband of the woman I cheated with told her because he found out. He found out about two years ago. Mm. And he contacted her and told her. How did he find out eight years after it happened? Um, another mutual friend of ours uh, uh, told him, let him know. Okay, sorry. He, are you, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, he confronted me about this when he found out about it and told me that he knew, but then uh, didn't tell me if whether or not he was going to tell my wife. But see, his wife and my wife are best friends. So mm. in order to try and save their friendship, at the time, he told me that he wasn't planning on telling my wife. Mm. But then something, something inside him just here recently caused him to tell her. So now she knows. Okay, so you didn't just cheat on your wife with a, a you know, a, an, a, an unconnected woman. This was her best friend. This was her best friend, yes. And how long have you all known each other for? I mean, 10 years is a while. Right. Well, no. So, I mean, I'm I'm almost 37 years old, and I've known that the, 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 the guy is an old friend of mine from, I met him in eighth grade. We've known each other for a long time. And then my wife and her best friend, they've known each other since high school. And my wife's even a couple years older than I am. Mm. So they've, we've all known each other for years. And how how long and how many times did you cheat on your wife? Was this, you know, one isolated incident 10 years ago? Was this a ongoing it was a thing couple over times. the past 10 years ago? It was a couple times, roughly, uh, you know, pretty close to each other. It happened about twice. Okay. Probably and, within uh, a, a month or two's time. Do you have a conversation about your wife? Uh, do you have a conversation with your wife about it? This was two weeks ago, you said. That she found yeah, about out. two weeks ago, she, about she, she found out. Yeah, and we've been talking. Well, the first few days of her finding out were pretty rough. See, the problem is, is I'm, 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 I'm working out of town. This has been horrible timing. I've been working out of town. I'm about 1,200 miles away from home when she found out about this. So I've been sure. pretty complete, pretty, pretty helpless about trying to take care of this, you know, face to face. It's all been over the phone. And, uh, it was pretty rough those first few days, but, uh, she seems like she's getting better. I don't, uh, I, I don't expect her to forgive me. I hope she does, but I don't expect her to, but, uh, I guess I'm just kind of hoping for the best now. Do you guys have kids? We have three kids. Mm. Do they know? So I just found out that one of them overheard my wife and I talking one evening. And uh, yeah, the, my, my, my middle daughter, she's about 16. She knows. Mm. And how, how are you feeling about the situation as a whole? I'm terrified. You know, I don't want to lose my family, you know. Mm. I, I made a really bad mistake. You know, uh, there's no excuse for it. And I'll do whatever it takes to, you know, keep my family together and, and keep my wife. Mm. Have you uh, talked through with your, I mean, I mean, you know, what have you done so far in your attempts to, to rectify the situation? Uh, you know, I've just tried to, <clears throat> any, any kind of answers my wife has for me, I, I do my best to answer them. I mean, it did happen a, a while ago and I, you know, I'm, having to try to remember a lot of things but i you know i i just i answer honestly and i answer answer truthfully uh whatever i can do you know i mean it, that's just, that's the problem about all i can do being that i'm away from home working about all i can do is just talk so it's just been a lot of talking you know and yeah. i and i let her say what she wants to say and i answer and i answer truthfully and uh so yeah I mean, that's about all i can do right now have you talked 
through it extensively with uh, your 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 sixteen year old? No, I have not. I haven't. Uh, to do that? I'm I'm going to. Um, she's pretty upset about it, from what I from what I understand, and uh, I just I haven't had that conversation with her yet. Mm. So yeah, that's how I send. Wow. Are you a religious person? You know, I never used to be years ago, um, but I, fi- I find myself a lot more religious now these days. And I think uh, I think my actions in the past really kind of helped get me where I am right now, faithfully. You know, uh, with with uh, my faith in in God. Mm-hmm. I know I've done wrong and. I, you know, I do my best to to pray and have a relationship with God. Well, listen, what did you say your name was? Nathan. Well, listen, Nathan, thank you for sharing. Yes, thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Of course. You have a good rest of the night. You too. Thanks, Gek. Call from... Bobbert. Bobbert? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, how are you, Bobbert? I'm I'm doing all right, Gek. I'm doing all right. How are you? Uh, you know, Bobbert, Bobbert. Is that have anything to do with Robert or just the Bobbert? Um, a little bit of both. I like to think. You know, just mm. couldn't choose. You couldn't choose. Are you a generally indecisive person? Yeah. Mm. What was the last you know, time you had start. a tough time making a decision? Um, earlier, actually. Earlier? Why? Yeah, earlier today. Um, I was trying to decide whether or not to, uh, like, continue this kind of... Like, I've been going to therapy on and off, and it's been kind of arduous and, and uh, wearing me down a little bit. So... I've got uh, something else scheduled for tomorrow, and um, I was kind of weighing on whether or not to skip it and try to just chill and repress all this shit for maybe a year more, or just... just Wait, okay, on. you're not talking about skipping one therapy session. You're talking about just skip, yeah, no, you're talking no. about skipping going to therapy. Yeah. Why, the why, first... do you th- why do you think that would help you? Well, uh, I had a, sort of a bad experience with it. Um, uh, I tried to, and um, my dad kind of got in the way. You tried to skip it, and your dad got in the way? Or you tried to do it, and your dad got in the way? The second one. I tried to do it, and my dad got in the way. How did your dad get in the way? Um, it was like a group session, and he lied. He lied. Well, you're not talking about group session, all right? Are you talking about just uh, a single session, a group session? What's the session that you have tomorrow? Um, it's a single session, but I've been hearing a lot lately from the therapists and doctors. I've been seeing that group sessions would be more uh, helpful to me, probably. Hmm. Well, if your doctors are telling you that group sessions would be helpful, then... I mean, why don't you go to, uh, 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 you know what you should do is go to the single session and tell all, I mean, everything, uh, have you, everything you just told me, like, you know, the fact that you don't want to go to therapy because your dad lied in well, group it, therapy. Have you told that to well, the decision? Therapist? Well, the decision has already, like, been made, like, against my, like, against my sort of gut feeling, like, even though I don't want to, I'm going to do it anyway, because I know that's what's best for me, but Good. I'm... That that was the decision I was kind of struggling with earlier. Just to answer the question, I'm not I'm mm. not still struggling with it now. Well, good. I'm glad that you decided to go. And now and now you have so much to talk about in the therapy. You you can get meta with it. You can talk about how you didn't want to go. Yeah, you're right. I actually intend to kind of bring that up, like right off the bat. Oh, you should totally bring it up. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Cool. And, it's, and right I actually thing. think that that's probably, uh, uh, I mean, they probably 
get that question all the time or you know that concern all the time of people not wanting to see them so oh, yeah they'll I be guess. offended yeah yeah well listen what'd you say your name was bobbert how how hath you sinned bobbert you seem like a nice guy you seem like you haven't sinned before but i i i've talked to many people and i know that looks can be deceiving and not that i can see you but yeah, um <laughs> well uh uh, well, I guess my voice is sort of deceiving because I've seen a lot, but uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll share a more entertaining, kind of lighthearted one. Sure. Um, when I was in like, I think like second or third grade, um, I, I was, uh, and to give this sort of like background, I guess, cause it is pretty awful and I know that now, but uh, I was like bullied pretty heavily. Uh, in my household as a kid. So I kind of turned into a bully in like elementary school. Yes, the transmutation of the the bullying energy. I got out of it in like middle school, of course, when I like changed schools and all that. But when I was like- You didn't become the Joker. Oh, thank you. I am too. But um, in like second or third grade, I had this friend, we'll just call him, uh, we'll just call him Pete. And uh, <laughs> Pete was, he was an awesome kid. He was an awesome kid, but um, he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, I guess. Sure. And this one time we were in like this, this kind of like, I don't know if a lot of schools have this, this kind of like daycare after school for like kids whose parents can't get off work, like right at three. Sure. And me and Pete were like playing with the Legos, the Legos and... <laughs> Uh, they had hand sanitizer to try and make sure nobody got sick. Because <laughs> you, you use Legos with your hands, and our school is kind of gross, I guess. Okay. But I was really bored while we were playing with these Legos, and I just saw this hand sanitizer just sitting there. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Pete, you know, you know, hand sanitizer is really for your eyes, right? And he's like, what? Really? I didn't have a chance to answer him because before he, he said really, and then immediately took like three big squirts of hand sanitizer, rubbed them into his hands, and then rubbed his hands into his eyes. Mm. And uh, I I didn't get in trouble for it. You didn't get in trouble for it? (laughs) No. How did you have how, what 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 events? I'm very curious what events preceded that. Well, the school we were at was gross, not just like on the outside, but on the inside, like the faculty, I guess. And uh, the way they saw it, or that that situation unfolded. <laughs> I guess they saw thought of it like it was his fault because it literally says hand sanitizer on the hand sanitizer like mm. as a like a matter of reading and we were in like second or third grade so they were just like really mad at him for actually falling for it but I don't think they realized that like I don't think it occurred to them that there might have been like developmental stuff in play or something like that. That's cra- that, That's crazy. They got. That's like you know what that is. That's like that's some real world ass like spelling like reading comprehension test. Right. They there. literally like. It was really awful how they how they like handled it. They were like Tony, what does that say? Hand sanitizer. And they like they they took him away like into little like detention after. Magic. Damn, he got, got he got hand sanitizer in his eyes and an F. Yeah. Damn, poor kid. Yeah, I think. I think What's he do now? Do you still to... do you still keep up with him? Uh no, I uh unfortunately I never got a chance to to make amends or anything like that. I uh I've tried a couple times, but. Every time I, I looked him up on Facebook like once a couple of years ago, and he wears glasses now. Do you think the two are uh, related? Yeah, because they didn't, 
when they put him in the room after he got it in his eyes, they didn't let him rinse it out or anything. Why? I don't know. I was like, kind of like peeking over like the teacher's shoulders and like on the on the outskirts, like as he was getting like chewed out because I wanted to know what was going to happen or like if he was going to be okay because his eyes were like bright, bright red. But I, I think I think I did that. Interesting. So how, how do you know for sure that the fact that he wears glasses now is related to this thing that happened to him many years ago? Well, I don't know for sure, which is the thing that kind of perplexes me about this and kind of makes me get into my own head a little bit about it, like just the possibility of it. Well, Bobert, it sounds like you have a lot to talk about tomorrow. Yep, for sure. Good luck, man. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Thanks. You too, Gek. F, dude. <laughs> Bay, oh shit, what if... <laughs> dude, what if they actually gave him better sight? Think about it, think about it, think about this, think about this. Alright. Theoretically... They could have actually given him better sight. Right? Because, think about this. No one puts hand sanitizer in their eye. Right? No one would ever put hand sanitizer in their eye. No one would ever do it. So, we don't know what happens if you do. And maybe what happens is you get superpowers. High risk, high reward. Call from... Um. To accept, press one. Hello? Hello? What's up? Hey. What's your name? Uh, Elliot. Elliot! Yeah, can you hear me all right? Elliot. Yes. Elliot, I can hear you beautifully. Awesome, awesome. It's great to hear, man. Uh, have we ever spoken before, Elliot? Uh, no. I don't think so. It's my first time calling in. So, uh, this is really a fir like your first time ever dialing the number? Yes, sir. Wow, that's awesome. A lot of people are like, damn, it took me like 500 tries. But you got it on the first <laughs> try, dude. Yeah, no, I, ju I just heard you guys were like taking calls. And I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Why not? Look, look, I mean, you came on a good night. We don't usually take calls on the stream. But um, tonight I figured we'd take some phone calls. Dude, that sounds amazing, man. You know, it's like Destiny, you know? Say again? You're playing Destiny? It's like De yeah, dude, it's like oh, Destiny, it's, Oh, it's man. like Destiny. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it could be Destiny. Do you believe in Destiny? Uh, not really. I'm not really a religious person myself. Well, I don't know if I don't know if you have to believe in I don't know if it's the concept of destinies is inherently religious. I mean, do you believe in fate? Do you believe in things happen for a reason, or or are you more towards the uh, side of everything is just random? Yeah, bro, everything's just random, you know. Mm. So you think it was completely random that you just got in uh, tonight? Oh, the first yeah, try. just luck. Just luck. You know? I agree with you. So Where have you sinned, Elliot? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I cheated, but not in that way. Um, okay. Yeah, so you know how we have this coronavirus going on? We, yes. I'm in school right now, and we have to take online exams. Mm. Now, uh, what's it called? I'm in this big, uh, Discord group with some students in the same class, and we all essentially we all just take the exam at the same time, and we cheat off there. Uh, but you know, I don't really, I'm not really fond of these people because I've never met them in my life. 
so what I did was, um, I, what's it called? I helped them out with the exam answers the, throughout the semester. And our teachers have this policy of where you have to get 50% on the final exam to pass. And so essentially, a lot of people were coming to me for answers on the exam. And on the final exam, I gave them wrong answers. And I heard about like five or six people filled out and they have to take the class again. Mm. You and gave them wrong answers on purpose. Yes, yes. Because I, I mean, I didn't like them, to be honest. Why but, didn't you, you know, like them? No, I mean, they didn't do anything wrong to me. It's not like they wronged me or anything. I just... You know, I wasn't really fond of them. You know, I had no connection to them. You know? Mm, so you gave them the wrong answers. These weren't people you disliked strongly and you were trying to... No. Seeking vengeance against them. You you were just kind <laughs> of failing them for sport. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. See, this is interesting to me because on one hand, it's like, look, if you're cheating off the exam... Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I mean, well, what do, you, what do you guys... What do you guys study? Uh, computer science. So, like, computer science. This particular, okay. this particular class was a really hard one. It's about like uh, computer hardware, like assembly and all that. You know, a bunch of ones and zeros. Hmm. See, yeah, this is an interesting thing because you know, look, I can't inherently say that what you did was wrong because it's well, like, you know, I mean, if you cheat on the exam. You know, uh -huh. you're 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 working outside the bounds of the system. Anything could happen. It's a lawless land. Right, right, right. But like the act of like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is a lawless land, but like, I don't know. You know, like because like, I mean, at the time, I didn't really care. But like now, I kind of feel I wouldn't say guilty, but like, uh, I don't know. Like almost at fault for them. You know. But I mean, no. I don't think you're at well I, I'm the what I'm most curious about yeah go aside ahead. from like whether or not what you did was wrong yeah. is, is not as interesting to me as w like why you did it like you just I uh -huh. mean you know if these people like look if you felt like oh these people are taking advantage of me and right. you know they're not actually my friends uh fuck <laughs> them i'm gonna give them the wrong answers but that feeling didn't seem like it was in you it seemed like you just kind of wanted to do this for for like sport <laughs> like i enjoyed it or something yeah I mean, you seem like you kind of enjoyed it <laughs> I, at, at the time I, I was just kind of feeling like high and mighty of myself because like i was definitely on uh, the top of the class I wouldn't say I was like the smartest one there. I was definitely one of the smartest ones in the class, at least. Um, but I mean, yeah, and, like, it kind of just felt nice to like, cause like their fate was in my hand. You like, do you understand? Yeah, you enjoyed the power of it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I guess I got, I did kind of get like power hungry right there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though you don't have a lot of power? Uh, like, in my life? or yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. But I, mean, I feel like this with everyone, you know? You're, you're born a certain way. You're born in a certain country. You don't really get the same opportunities as everyone else, you know? You're, you're bound to feel perilous at some time in your life. But, like, you know, that's life. Hmm. Now, did these students who mm -hmm. you gave the wrong answers to, did they eventually yeah. come back to you and be like, hey, what the fuck, well, these answers are wrong? Well, no. Um, Never heard from so, again. <laughs> nah, so essentially, we're in this big disco group, and I just, all I did was I left the group after we completed the class, and I never heard from them again. Because, you know, it's all online. You know, like, what, what are they going to do, track me down? They don't even know mm -hmm. me. But you, you know? told me that they, you told me that you heard that some of them failed. Yeah, yeah, from other students. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but but yeah. you think you're feeling guilty about what you did? Yeah, you know, because like now, now they have to repeat the semester, and like I heard from one of them at least that like um, they had really strict parents, and like 
there overseas, you know? And so, like, failing his class, like, really hurt them financially speaking. I kind of felt bad about that, you know? Because, mm. like, they had to retake a class, which means they have to, like, reinvest the money to take that class again, you know? And colleges, they, they're not particularly cheap. Well, listen, before we go. Yeah. Would you do it again? No, 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 I would not. Thank you for sharing, man. You have a good rest of the night. Yeah, you too, Lyle. Call from Kirby. Kirby? Hello? Kirby. Hello, am I on stream? You are, Kirby. Oh, what's up, Lyle? What's well, not, you know, not a whole heck of a lot. Kirby, so, is that your real name? You don't have to tell me what your real name is, but is Kirby your real name? Oh, God, I wish. How did you pick that name? Do you have an affinity for the Kirby series? Uh, I mean Kirby, and it's just a very... He's just a pink ball, man. He looks real chill and nice, and, like, the way I perceive myself is not like that. So I was like, that's kind of funny. I'll be Kirby. Interesting. The way you perceive yourself is not like that. How, how do you perceive yourself? I'm very, like, <laughs> mean and dark and rude, and Kirby is just a nice little ball, and he just screams pollo at people, you know? Mean and dark and rude. What makes you say that you are mean and dark and rude? Well, I, I don't really like people. This is going to tie into my sin. I don't care about other people. Interesting. How old are you? I'm 19. Okay. Well, what's your sin? How hath you sinned, Kirby? So, going on with the theme of cheating, I have not been cheated on, but I've been the cheater for other people. You get me? You said that like, the way I don't, I can't describe exactly why, but that the way you phrased that is I have been the I have not been cheated on, but I have been the cheater for other people. I can't describe exactly what bothers me about the way you phrased that. I wish I could, but don't, that's definitely not okay. What go on. Yes, Homewrecker Kirby. Everyone in the chat saying that, yes. It's, I just don't care about other people. So knowingly letting someone cheat is bad. Yeah, but like, it, it, for example, it was a toxic relationship between the both of them. And neither of them wanted to be with each other. Not to say that I wanted to be with that person either. But like, we did the dirty. And then their significant other was mad. And I was just like, well, that, that sucks, I guess. My bad. Why, why do you think you don't care about other people? Interesting. Um, because I've been let down a lot. I can't have expectations of others. You can't have ex- Well, I, I mean, I- but, I mean, I think it's a good thing not to have expectations of others, but I don't- I, I don't necessarily look- link having not having expectations with other of not having expectations of others to not caring about others i don't think those two things have to be inherently related mm, i i agree but i guess it's just in my experience where i don't expect anything of others okay but why why what do you like you don't care about other people's feelings you don't care if you hurt other people well, Is I mean, like, you know, you, you have your people, right? Like, just your close friend circle or whatever. Those people I care about, but, like, random people? No, not really. Hmm. Do you, let me ask you something. Do you see this as a problem? I do. I really do. <laughs> okay, so, so you're not in the camp of I don't care about other people and fuck it. I mean, you kind of are, but... Uh, there is a, a, a part of you that w would like to care about other people, it sounds like. I I don't think I can have that, like, emotional attachment to other people enough to care about them, you know? Mm. Well, 
I mean, look, you just said that you you just said that you have people that you do care about. Yes, I do. So, so that's not true. You uh, you do have the capacity to have emotional attachments to people and care about them. But like when I hurt their feelings, I don't I don't feel bad about it. Mm. Let me. Have, is this something you've spoken to a real therapist about? Yes, and I do and go to therapy to for say? everyone in chat. Oh man, Stacy, she's just like, girl, you need help, and I'm like, that's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> what fuck? <laughs> your, your therapist said to you, you need help. Yes. Okay. What? What, what did she elaborate on that? Did she offer any? Mm, not enough, I would say. She said you need help. Okay, you told her I don't care about other people. I don't care when they hurt their feelings and. What, what, what did she say? Exactly. She was just like, well, you know, you, the real lack of empathy is probably, like, from trauma or something. And I'm like, yeah, probably, Stacy. And you, just conversations like that with her. It's from trauma. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't... Mm. Well, I mean, listen. First of all, you should get a new therapist. Until you find someone Most that definitely. is helpful for you. Um, but in the meantime, you know, it's one thing not to care about other people, but it's another thing when, you know, you go out and your actions start to have adverse effects on other people. So, you know, um, I mean, look, uh, try to get some help. Try to keep the havoc wreaking. Um... You know, under control until until you can get some help. Hmm. You know, I'm imagining Kirby. Kirby swallows you, and gains your your copies your ability to not care about other people, and just goes on like a a, a, a rampage of 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 sin. And it's a video game. It's called Kirby's Rampage of Sin. It's on the, you know, it's on the Switch. I don't know if you've seen those uh, memes where it's like, if Kirby like ate you or whatever, what would your power be? So what would your power be, Gek? It'd be, a, it'd be turned into a Gecko, dude. Well, listen, Kirby. Are you going to try to find a new therapist? Um, They have me on meds right now, and I don't really like it, so probably... Good. I uh, I, ho I hope that everything works out for you. Thank you, man. Um, you have a good rest of the night. You too. I will try to enjoy stream. I was the cheater for other people. What does that mean? Call from David. David. The Lyle. We're doing a lot big. Oh man, I didn't think I'd reach you, man. I'm not gonna lie. Why didn't you think you'd reach me? You got you called the phone number. Well, I called earlier. I wasn't the other David that cheated, you know. So I was the one that didn't stay on the line. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad we finally got the chat with you. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm uh baked some cookies, watching Rush Hour, watching your stream at the same time. You're watching the movie Rush Hour. Yeah. How can I ask? How are you? I don't understand media consumption habits these days. Because I'll go to my friend's house and they got a movie on, they got a stream on, they got the Beatles playing, they're watching porn, they're doing, they're brushing their teeth. Like, how do you do all these different things? How are you watching my stream and watching Rush Hour? What's like taking dominance in your mind as you're processing all this information? Well. The majority of it's mostly uh, when when you're talking to somebody and you're on your stream, I turn the volume up on your stream and then I turn down rush hour. But then, you know, as it gets boring or, you know, the person's, you know, not interesting enough for me, mm. I just turn up rush hour 
then once it ends, I'll pause rush hour. Like I, I gotta call them. I gotta call them. <laughs> mm. I'd love. I would love to see like a. I, I mean, the data on ha- what percentage of the stream you've selected to have it be the dominant thing over rush hour. Like how often? Do, who? Who? How often over the, this this current stream did it get boring and you t- you put rush hour on? Mm. I, be, I be, like be completely Kirby honest girl. with me. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like. I didn't like Kirby Girl, so I, I tuned her out for a bit. It's like once she talked, started talking about her therapist, I was like, all right, she's lying. I'm I'm a I'm gonna keep watching Rush Hour. <laughs> you thought she was lying? Yeah. Lying about uh, about what? Uh, the therapist telling her she needs to get help. Ain't no therapist gonna tell you that. I've, there are some terrible therapists out there, by the way. I, have you ever been to therapy? Uh, I have, but he was a Christian therapist. Oh. But he gave good advice, you know. And just at the end of it, he just prayed for me, you know, so. Oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> I mean, no offense. I mean, but, no, if, but if I went to a therapist and they prayed for me, I would be so pissed off. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's uh, he uh, he gives you advice, then he tells you God will work it out. So it's a little weird. Well, if God, if I, uh, you know what, that would piss me off too. If God is gonna work it out, you know, why doesn't he just do it right now? Why? What the hell is he waiting for? That's what I'm saying, man. I. I still have to go to church because I made this deal with my uh, my boss and I lost, so I got to go to church every Sunday with him now. You made a bet. And, what, was uh, the, what was the deal or the bet? Well, he said if he could get me out of uh, West Virginia from an abusive job, uh, I got to go to church every Sunday if I work for him. I'm just like, well, shit, he did it. I don't know how he did it, but wait, this, this wait, this man is making it so that. One of the requirements of working for him is that you have to go to church? Yes. Personal requirement, yes. All right, so it's not an actual... He's not going to fire you if you don't do it, but you're a man of your word and you agree to it. Yes. How do you feel yes. about it? Have you, been, is, is, have you been enjoying your church-going experience? Uh, some of it. I mean, it connects to how I've sinned. So it's... Uh... It's um, it's fun. It's all right. I just don't go to the. I don't actually go inside. I just sit out there and drink coffee with the, the old people. Well, you're not serious, are you? You don't actually go in. Uh, I'm there. I mean, I have a personal relationship with Pastor because he's just such a nice guy. He can't really. He smiles at you. Just like shit. I gotta smile uh, back. I know it's so annoying. I I mean, we had to cat. We had a, that Catholic guy. Colin, he was so nice. It's so annoying when they're nice, because then you, it makes you want to not be mean about religion, because they're, they're nice people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've helped well, out. How hath you sinned? What was what's the you said? This is in connection to your sin. Uh, it connected because I I talked to one of the old people at church about it, but back in the day, I stole a lot. So, uh, I don't know, back in the day, I'd say probably middle school, high school, um, I lived in Detroit, and I stole a lot of things. I stole from my family, primarily my dad. I didn't like my dad at the time. But uh, stole a lot, threw money everywhere, stole for a lot of, I think they were blood. They wore a lot of red. That's about it. But, I mean, they'll have their off days and wear purple for some fucking reason. You stole from Bloods? Yeah, like, uh, no, not from Bloods. I I stole things and sold it to them. It was more like a, you gotta survive out there type of thing. Were you uh, you in the gang? No, 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 no. I was too, too, uh, too baby-faced Asian for that, so. Okay. (laughs) But, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'd say I'd stolen things from, you know, candy to whole entire washing machines and video games. Um, I'd, how, I'd, the, I'd, I'm, how the fuck do you steal a washing machine? Well, it was back in the day, man. You know, around like, I'd say probably 
born 2008, you know, back in the day. And I walked into a Sears and I didn't look like a gang member or anything like that. I walk in with khakis, a dress shirt, and I just say, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, can I just grab the dolly and grab this uh, display? Uh, I already <laughs> my dad and I already talked to them recently, and they said that the last mile he already paid for it. He's like, oh, yeah, sure, go ahead, honey. And, you know, just, you just got to stroll that shit out there, and that's it. Damn. You, that I'm not going to lie, like, getting away with stealing, uh, with, like, stealing a washing machine... Would pro- that probably seems like it would feel really good. Just the act of that. Feel, that kind of feels like you pulled. I mean, because stealing like whatever, some candy or whatever, you know, it's like, you know. But I mean, getting away with a washing machine. I mean, that's a true heist score. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I gave up on it a long time ago. So it's there's two more steps like to a, that. You have to deceive the part. You have a disguise, kind of. Yeah, kind of, but that was actually who I was. <laughs> hmm. All right, so you st- you stole a lot of things, and then and then you talked to it about you talked to this woman at church about this, and what what did she have to tell you? Well, they they tried to portray it to like my relationship with my father because hmm. how it all started is I would steal money from him and. Uh, granted, he wasn't a good father when I was a little kid, so my relationship him, with him wasn't that great. So uh, he's old school, so he keeps uh, his money and his illegal money under his uh, mattress. So I wouldn't steal like you know a couple bucks. I'd steal you know two thousand, three thousand dollars every week. And how do you not notice that? Well, apparently this dude. Is rolling in money. I mean, I could go on and on about how, you know, he's still a shitty father to me. <laughs> but, but had enough that he wasn't noticing 2000 3000 bucks just disappearing well, from you, the stockpile. The way it looked, man, he had a 1911 and uh, what's it called? One of those fanny packs full of cash that, you know, just had crumpled up hundreds in it, you know? And then the other stuff were just like rolls of hundreds. And, yeah. uh, you know, it it, it it is what it is. You know, I didn't, I was too young at the time to even care. You know, I was like, that's money. I want money. But it okay. uh, turns out, you know, like as I grew older and stuff like that, yeah, he, uh, he uh, manages a lot of uh, salons, dry cleaners, uh, a lot of those places in the Asian community. So, you know, so they, they give him cash because, you know, they, they, they have, some of them have illegal businesses, and that's how it all started. But nonetheless, he just started talking about how, you know, why do you hate your father? Things like that. Well, because, you know, he's a, uh, you know, I, I live in his shadow, and I hated it. So, you know, now I'm here far, far away from Michigan and uh, living in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And uh, I don't know. I just told her, you know, I don't think I'd be able to forgive him now. Because I felt bad. At one point, I wanted to apologize and tell him. But, you know, the last time I talked to him, he said I was broke and a loser and laughed at me and I hung up. So, <laughs> you know, like, you know what? He doesn't really need to know now. Mm. And, you know, that's how Asian families are, you know? Mm. And you, how long ago was this when you last talked to him? I'd say in August of last year. Mm. So you have no plans to talk to him again? Well, I figured I'd call him for Father's Day next month, but I think he would just ask me if I'm making money yet. Um, so it's kind of that thing where I need to reevaluate my uh, relationship with him. But uh, hmm. it's hard, you know? It's... Uh, He's not really, you know, everything that I wanted to be when I was a kid was him, but now it's more like everything I don't want to be is him. Mm. And, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say he's the source of all my, my, my greatest sin, but what's one of the most sinful things I've done? I don't know. And I used to manipulate all my, uh, I don't know, my peers in school with money. 
you used to get manipulate friends. your peers in school with money, like you would pay them to do things for you? Yeah, it was fun to just throw 20 bucks on the floor and watch them fight over it and things like that and amusement because I knew that money wasn't mine. Mm. You know, like, hey, man, you you take this cheese stick and smack your friend, I'll give you 20 bucks. That's that stupid stuff. And, you, I feel like you, you, you were like, uh, like, like one of those people that stood at the top of in the balcony at the Roman wars, watching people, <laughs> you know, pitting fights for your yeah. own amusement. Well, that's you know, that's. It, it was I'm not gonna lie. If I had disposable income at a uh, when I was in high school, I would definitely spend a little bit of it on initiating cheesesteak fights. I, I think that. Uh, you know, a lot of people might. Yeah. I mean, I honestly just probably did it because, you know, didn't want the affection. You know, like my dad didn't give me any affection or attention back when I was young or whatever. But, you know, he right. said, yeah, you know, it is the same. A lot of Asian parents say or whatever it is. Well, he, he never really said that type of stuff. Mostly my dad just said, do me I and then that's what it. What does that mean? Uh, uh, basically, like, damn this guy. <laughs> In a simplistic term. But, you know, like, uh, I don't know. A lot of shit like that. He never said anything else. Like, he was proud of me or some shit like that. He just... Well, I'm, I, so it sounds to me like now... I mean, now, though. It sounds to me like now you've, you've, you've sort of got your own life going. Yeah. But, you I know, mean that's, that's awesome. It's I, you know, I I feel for I you know, we get we get people calling in being like you know, I want to do something that'll make my family proud of me and this and that and you know I I, I it's, it's cool when when people are able to move past that and be able to build something just independently. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what I, I'm trying, I'm getting there, but it's not only like it's trying to pick up the pieces after you get out. I got out, but it's uh, now it's I gotta I gotta get the rest of my siblings out. You know, we all came out pretty messed up from whatever happened with our family. So, do any of your siblings um, live uh, near where you live? Oh, uh, my sister does, but she she got affected by my dad pretty heavily. So she's on that. You know, you need to be successful, blah 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 blah, and have enough money, David. And, you know, they shunned me for about a year, and I wasn't allowed to go to uh, family gatherings or anything like that for about a year because I basically told them, hey, bug off. I'm going to do whatever I uh, want to do. And they're like, all right, well, don't talk to them. And I was like, oh, that sucks. And then, uh, well, listen, older- man. Yeah. Before, but listen, before we go, I mean, what's your, what's your, your dream goal? Oof. Just want to, honestly, I just want to be content with uh, myself. Just want to be uh, acknowledged by myself. I like that. I think that that's a good goal. I think that, um, you know, look, I'm proud of you, man. It sounds like you've been able to, to uh, get a good dent in that. By moving away from from your family, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will just succumb to, you know, living by their parents' expectations uh, for their entire life. But you know, even though it's hard, I'm glad to hear you're making a dent in it. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, man. It means a lot. Um, I can't even I can't even believe I got on a phone call with you. You know, yeah, for like, sure, man. Been watching you for a long time. Called oh, you yeah. like 50 times tonight told everyone I knew about you. It's just like, man, you seem like a cool guy. I gotta talk to him. <laughs> well, listen, dude, what'd you say your name was? Your name was... F- I'm not gonna guess because I'm gonna get it wrong. What's your name was? David. David, okay. I was gonna guess Philip, and that would have been wrong. Well, thank you so much yeah. for, for calling, David. You have a wonderful rest of the night. You too. Thanks. Woo-wee. Call from... Jim? Jin. That's me. How are I'm you? Jim, how you doing, Lyle? You said your name was Jim? Correct. J I M. Can you spell that again? J I M. Can you spell it backwards? Uh, 
M I J. How hath you sinned, Jim? Oh, Lyle, this is this is not a recent sin. Um, it happened a quite a long time ago when I was, I don't know, probably eighteen or nineteen. I'm thirty-one now. Mm. Um, we lived on a lake, and I guess I don't even know if it's really a sin. Um, it's just kind of something that it's fucked up, but I kind of think about more often than I should. Uh, so. We were we lived out on a lake. I was sitting on a, by the by the dock. This tiny little bird flew up and it landed in the water. And it landed far out in the water, far enough to where I couldn't grab it. And it was in there for about a minute before it floated, you know, close enough to where I could reach the bird. I pulled the bird out of the water, and it is struggling to breathe. It's it's in a bad place. And morally, I didn't feel that I should sit there and let the bird struggle like that. Now, I'm, I'm no aviary expert by any means, but I assumed the bird was going to die. So wait, why was the bird... Wait, so the bird was al- the bird was dying already because it was because it was drowning? Yeah, I, I believe. It was... A, so I pulled it out of the water and it was just like... <laughs> and I just... I, I didn't... I don't know. It just... It felt bad. It felt really bad to sit there and watch the bird making that noise. Hmm. Well, so, I guess you. I guess if you you put it out of his misery, is that is y- that? Yes, that is where but, it's going to lead to. Yes, I, I put the bird out of its hmm. misery. But I'm I just don't know if I, I was in the right. I guess that's not that bad because know? if you. But I guess you didn't. You didn't know. Like I. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done there. I don't know what I would have done there. Yeah, I just. I don't know. Like like I said, it's like it's not really a sin per se, but it's it's not maybe the the right thing to have done at the time well i don't know what i would have done because if the bird because uh, if the bird uh, you know you didn't want to watch the bird just sit there and writhe in pain yes correct i mean and you're not you don't know how to f- it's not like you're a bird you can fix it N- no and i taking it to a veterinarian or the animal rescue center kind of seemed out of the picture at that point in time damn that was a tough decision i agree I agree it was, and I'm just not sure if I made the right decision at the time. Like I said, it's not recent. This happened quite quite some time ago, but I do think about it every now and again, more often than I should. Hmm. Well, well, when you think about it, what sort of thoughts do you have? Like, shit, man, did I do the right thing? Was that the right choice to make? Hmm. Have you talked about this with anyone else? Oh, no, not really. Hmm. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure somebody knows. I'm sure my mom knows about it or something. I'm sure I told her, told her when it happened, but as of recently, okay, so no. You, so no. when you told your mom what happened, what did she say? Did, you, did she think you did the, the, the correct thing? I think she said something similar to, well, that's kind of fucked up, Jim. But, you know, you know, I... <laughs> <I'd>... <laughs> she just said, she just said, that's kind of fucked up. And then she walked away, dude. Yeah. Well, how she didn't walk away. I mean, I think we continued to talk about it, but it was, was kind of yeah. fucked up, Jim. It was kind of fucked right, up, I Jim. Go, I gotta go make dinner. Yeah, I don't know if she made dinner. I, I don't recall what happened the rest of that day. I might have eaten that bird. You... <laughs> I'm just kidding. We didn't eat the bird. That that would be fucked up. Hey, no, I'm, I'm I don't, that, that wouldn't have... Because, all right, all, well, theoretically, if you ate that bird, wouldn't that have also been the right thing to do? Because if you're supposed to use every part of the animal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, personally, you are, if you I are die, not wrong. I mean, I'll say personally, if I die, you, I, you can eat me if you want. I'll just—that's an open invitation. If there are any like, <laughs> like if there are any cannibals out there, and like, you know how when you go to, you know, when you're like, if you're like addicted to like a drug or something, you go to rehab, they give you yeah. a little bit of the drug, so you don't go through like intense withdrawal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If they have, if there's some sort of like rehab for cannibals, where like cannibal, they turn in cannibals. And they they need to give them a little bit of human flesh, or so, so they don't go through withdrawal. I will I'll gladly volunteer to be be the dead guy that they feed to the cannibals for that purpose. And you can eat me if you're dead. I, I mean, I'm just saying for the I purpose of not that. being I, wasteful. I really that's appreciate how that. I would feel. I, don't, I mean, the bird, I, I'm sure it didn't have like anything in in its wallet about that, but 
I don't even think it had a, a concept of anything close to that. No, it didn't. <laughs> I, no, it but didn't. it's in Burr it was, Heaven it was now. Just sad. Or I don't know what kind of. Maybe it's hanging uh, out with I, us. Yeah, probably. That's just in the ground. We, we, I buried it. That's where it's at. It's bones. It's bones, my guy. Well, you know what, Jim? Soon enough, we'll all be bones. That is the truest statement I've ever heard. You have a one for us of the night, Jim. You too, Lyle. Thank you for your time. Call from. Josh. Josh! Josh! Huh. Did not expect to make it on. Go figure, you never know. What do you mean? What do you mean you didn't expect to make it on, Josh? You called! Uh, yeah, but statistically speaking, I wasn't going to make it on. Who cares about statistics, Josh? You have the heart well, of the cards, and you, not, you, you, you not got heart. Not this guy. Got... Have we spoken before, Josh? No. We have. Oh my God! I love. I love. This is so. so I, I'm so happy, Josh. I mean, not only do I get to be a gecko on the computer, every time I do this stream, I get to talk to, to, to tons of brand new people. This is this is incredible. I'm so happy you called in. Yeah, Josh. you said it, you said a few minutes ago it's a one and done situation, so we have to make it good, right? Hmm. You know, I'm. I don't have an exclusive like. It's not a rule. You know, I'm not gonna hang up on you because I feel like that would be. You know, look. I mean, if if someone calls back in, if I get a return caller, you know, uh, that's that's probably a person who you know has been with the stream for a while and is you know coming back. And I'm like, well, I don't want to snub these people. You know, so I I feel bad making it a rule, but at the same to coin, you know, I, a lot of people trying to get in, and you know, you know. Anyway, we try to be fair. How are you, Josh? Uh, well, I'm connecting my ears, so if I drop out for half a second, that's why. There we go. It'll it'll come. There we are. So what's up? So how hast thou sinned is the question, right? Sure is. How have you sinned? Um well, I have, I have failed to do everything that I can to be successful so that I can help other people. You have failed to do everything that you can to be thus, successful thus so that you far, can help other people. Far. How old are you? Uh, for, for a few more days, 38. Why do you say you have failed? Thus far. Thus far, okay. When you say you have failed to do everything you can, that's—I mean—that's a whole big. Well, okay, I've, yeah, that's, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. How about um, I haven't achieved even you know basic stable success for myself, so that I'm able to reach out and help others. But you're not talking about achievements. You're talking about trying. You're saying I have failed to try. You have not. You, that's a uh, there's a oh, difference between yeah. failing to try and trying and failing. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I haven't tried hard enough, have I? Uh, well, before you do something, I think it's important to define what it is you actually are trying to do. So what is it that you are trying to do? Well, what it, you know, they tell you on the airplane that you have to put your own mask on first, right? Yes. You can't help, you can't help anyone else if, you, if you're not in a position to. Sure. So... So far, I haven't put myself in a position to help anyone. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so I get up every think, day. What do you, you think know? would put you in a position to help other people? I um, mean, you know, the, the, the basics, you know, having a stable job, having stable emotions, uh, having a stable schedule, having, you know, just it, general basic stability, things that most people should have and hopefully many people do have. Have you made sort of concrete definitions of what stability looks like to you? Yeah. And what are those definitions? I mean, ha having a home, having a job that has enough money to keep that home, keeping that home in order, enough money to pay your bills, you know, like uh, enough money to see all the uh, physical and mental health professionals you need to see. Enough to uh, to you know engage in the self care that is needed to keep one healthy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, have you gone to see, I mean, for the, you know, when you mentioned emotional stability, have you gone to see a uh, licensed? I, I, yeah, so I do not have uh, an, uh, a, an appropriate relationship, therapeutic relationship with a mental health professional. It is a very daunting thing for me. Uh, and I've reached out and tried a number of times. It hasn't worked out. And, you know, you kind of, you spend a lot of energy and effort, you know, filling your guts. And what do you mean? You, know, what do you, you, go, you go for a while. What do you mean? What do you mean you've reached out to? What do you mean you've reached out? No, I've 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 gone I've, like I have gone and I've engaged in the therapeutic process. I've made appointments with people and I've gone to see them for a very long okay. time. Sometimes. So by the way, by the way, first more. of all, first of all, you opened this with saying you haven't tried, okay, and that's wrong. You know. I, well, like I haven't tried. succeeded thus far. Okay, but I, well, 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 forget about whether or not you succeeded. You've tried. You know, I, I just want to make it clear. Yeah. You said you said that you didn't try, and you you have tried. I would have to go back and remember my words. But yeah, it's possible. It's possible that I wasn't giving myself enough credit in that particular sense. But the true the the true sin here, since that's what we're talking about, is that you know I haven't I haven't leveraged my advantages and I haven't vanquished my challenges to the point where I can just participate and, you know, not be a drain on society and be an additive factor. Okay, when you've gone to, the, you said you've reached out to these uh, uh, professionals, What? and you, I'm assuming you've told them everything you've told me. Some degree or another. I mean, this has been, you know, I, it, it's been over a long span of time and my view hasn't always been quite so clear. And when you tell them what you tell, when, when you tell these uh, therapists what you have told me, what do they tell you? Some of them resonate, some of them don't. A lot of them are hacks. Uh, a lot of them are trying and are just in the wrong profession. Uh, very few hacks. have actually gotten any respect from me. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the term hack, I used to do stand-up, and that was a big thing. That That's that's a, ter that's a big term in stand-up, a hack. I think you still do stand-up. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but... but anyway, <laughs> the, the, it's funny, I've never heard that in... Um, uh, uh, being a... I, I kind of actually, I actually kind of like that a little bit. I mean, I know it's cynical. But, uh, a hack. Well, yeah, you, you, would more, you would more, hack. Yeah, you would more expect to hear a quack, but that's like that's oh, like quack. even stronger. Yeah, a, a quack is usually, uh, you know, in the medical sense, you know, quack doctors. But a hack. A is, quack uh, to me, I think there's a difference thing. between a quack and a hack. Because a quack to me is someone who practices something that's fake, where a hack is someone that. Who practices something real poorly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that works. But I, I, I think hack is a funny uh, way to describe a therapist. Uh, accurate yeah, well, a lot of them are. a bad one. Yeah, okay, a lot so of them are. And I'm not, I, I don't mean to paint hacks. hacks. Yeah, and I don't, so that's the thing. I didn't know. They're not all hacks. A lot of them, a lot of them are. That's the thing. I don't mean to paint everybody with brush. Like, there's, there's, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole herd of magical unicorn therapists out there. And, like, I got to go catch one of them or something. But, like, it's a, it's a daunting task. Hmm. Okay. Well, you've tried. Um, I've put in some effort. I mean, did I you stop trying? I, I haven't put in effort in a very long time. Um, okay. Uh, do you have a, do you have a job? I could have a job. How about, how's that one? Uh, there's been work that's available to me that I've uh, been unable to overcome my anxiety and go do. Okay, so it sounds like, uh, okay, so it sounds like you got to get the, 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 the first thing we've been talking about, which is, you know, mental health help before you go out and, and get a job. You know, you, you, you don't want to be taking on all your demons at once. One thing at a time, right? Yeah. Hmm. Why is it such a daunting task for you to find a therapist? Uh, because uh, because I've put too much on it. Uh, really, uh, really, all I need to, all all I need to get going is someone who can like effectively be an executive assistant. Like that would get my day to day jump started, and I don't have to get into deep psychoanalysis until quite some time. But, you know, I, I kind of lump it all together. And it's like, if I go once, then I want that person to be my everything. And, like, this black and white thinking is not super healthy. You said you need an executive assistant. What do, what do, you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, like, if I, if I, oh, so what I mean is, you know, you know how, like, um, being rich in the United States, like, doesn't fix problems, but it, sometimes it does. And sometimes it just helps you avoid them. So there are executives that I've worked with. And, you know, this, this, this 
personality type is parodied in media everywhere, they're a mess. They're a complete mess. And the only reason they're able to function in everyday life is because they have people who they pay to do things for them. Uh, so that's a realistic thing. Like if I literally just had the money to pay an executive assistant and kept the schedule, kept me on target, et cetera, you know, poked me in the direction that I needed to go in, that would be enough to get me started. But no one has that kind of money, you know? Well, okay, if you need any, well, okay. Well, here, I'm confused because you're painting a picture of yourself as, you're, you're painting this image of yourself as you say you're not contributing to society, but Correct. you have enough to do you have enough that you need to do that would require an assistant i no like even basic uh, okay i'm saying the effective equivalent of that not like the actual dude that gives business tasks i mean for basic everyday stuff like you know like just functioning mm, okay you need help functioning i mean are you um have you, have, you know, have you been diagnosed with, like, a legitimate mental illness? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've received diagnoses of uh, major depression disorder and borderline personality disorder. You, you should, uh, uh, again, man, I mean, I, I, there's not, there's not a whole lot I can tell you, but you should continue to definitely, you know, uh, here, well, one thing I do want to tell you, and I'm not a real therapist or anything, I'm not, you know. No, but uh, you're a thoughtful you soul who anything. usually has good opinions. Okay, well, then here's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you, uh, uh, um, you started this out by saying that you haven't been trying, which uh, we haven't tried enough. determined is not true. You, you have been trying. You've been putting in effort. Um, I would, if I were you, just continue to put in that effort, and you will eventually, I believe, find a mental health professional that clicks with you. And it sounds like that's really yeah, I mean, what you need. And so I would the, continue to go down that path of trying to find that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the answer is always just do it. It's, it's difficult to, you know, to find the strength to do that, especially after, at, at risk of, you know, I don't want to turn the conversation political, but it's been five years of sociopolitical trauma, and it's been pretty harsh. Well, I mean, keep, keep staying in the path, man. Keep trying to find someone. <laughs> that's the best I can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the best anyone could. That's the thing, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's just, you know, you need to hear it as often as possible and hear it from the right people is all. Of course, man. I, I, I appreciate you sharing, Josh. Josh, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the word. I remember I, the I don't fucking know if, name, I, baby. <laughs> well done. I, I don't know if my brother is listening, but he's, uh, he told me that I have to watch your show. So I <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> what, what's your relationship with your brother like? Uh, he's the only one in my family that I can be particularly close to. All the rest of them are awful conservatives of some sort or another. Okay, when you tell, oh, real quick, before we go, because I'm curious about this, when you tell all this stuff to your brother, I'm assuming you have, because you're probably, you're closer with uh -huh. him than you are with me, and you've told me all this stuff. Well, I'm going to tell him to watch the VOD, so there's that. <laughs> all right, tell him to watch the VOD, and then listen to what he says, because he seems like he's a smart guy. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he knows this stuff. You know, he's, what, he's is, what is it? What does he few. usually tell you when you when you come to him for advice? Uh, you know, there's not really anything that anyone can tell me, and 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 that's the thing. It's like uh, sometimes the best thing you could do for someone is just let them know that you're there for them and not tell them what to do. Oh yeah. Well, listen, man, you, you have a good rest of the night, Josh, and and good luck to you. you I'm too. rooting for you. You too. I appreciate your time. Good night, man. Have a good evening. That was 13 minutes? That did not feel like 13 minutes. Call from... What up, Mark Gecko? To accept... Yeah, how you doing, Doug? Hello? Hey, what's up, player? What's going on, buddy? Well, well, what's what's up with you? How have you sinned? Oh, shit. Uh, pick a genre, man. All around. A genre? <laughs> pick a genre? <laughs> a genre of sin? Uh... I don't know. You you tell me what you got. You 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 tell me where 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 are we going here? Oh shit! Any direction, man. Um, the nearest sin that would be worth a shit. Uh, not so much lately. Not that I'm a dad, man. But you know, when I was a kid, I was a piece of shit. When you were a kid, you were a piece of shit. Yeah, pretty much. How so? What's the worst thing you did? Oh, 
work. It's not gonna make. Oh. It's not gonna make me. It's not gonna. It's not gonna piss me off, is it? No, not gonna piss you off. No, I ain't, I ain't an actual piece of shit. What'd you What'd you do when you were a kid? Oh, just steady sold drugs. Was a piece of shit. Lied a lot. Mm. Thought I was all about myself. But mm. you know, when you have kids, man, it starts to give you a reality check. Mm. Okay, so you 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 have kids now. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Are your kids anything like how you were when you were a kid? Absolutely not. Mm. Uh, what, why do you think that is? Do you think that the way that you raise them is different than how you were raised? Oh, fact. Fact, absolutely. You know, learn from the mistakes and travel forward, I guess. That's, that's really cool because, you know, a lot of the times you hear about, you know, sort of chains of that. Uh, you know, your, your dad treats you shitty, so you treat your kids shitty. You know, it sounds like you've broken nah. it, broken a chain of sorts. Yeah, absolutely, man. My kids are happy and healthy, man, in the right direction. That's I just cool. wasn't lucky enough to have that direction, man, that's all. Well, that's cool. What do you think factored into that? What do you think um, allowed you to break this chain? Oh, the fear, man. I, I've never really been scared in my life until the first pregnancy, man. I didn't, I didn't realize how scared shit actually got. So it kind of straightened me up a little bit. That's awesome. Um... Why were you scared? Oh, man, I was... I wasn't doing a very good job of taking care of myself, man. Scared the shit out of me. How am I going to take care of somebody else that needs me? You know what I mean? It's just a reality check. I was living life for me, man, and that's all. I mean, that's a pretty self-centered, shitty way of going. Mm. You know, to talk about... I, I Initially, I didn't want to talk about the previous caller, but I want to bring up sort of what they were talking about, because they were mentioning, you know... Uh, and, and I sort of have my own thoughts about this... You know, they were mentioning that, you know, it's important to take care of yourself before you take care of oh. others. And, yeah, you know, right. I don't have a refined... Uh, I, I, I generally believe that, but I have read some things about how, you know, and thought of in my own head of some things of like, you know, I feel like you can do both simultaneously or help others as a way of helping yourself. Uh, kind of, man. It kind of comes down to that old school shit of, of you can't help unless you help yourself like i can't help yeah, my kids if i'm not in a good position to help them you know if i'm, if I'm still mm -hmm. being a jackass then you gotta lead by example man you know the whole thing mm. um uh, what would you say is the biggest difference between you now and you then if you had to pick one key aspect uh caring caring you care you didn't care then but now you care Correct. um we had a caller this is to kind of round out the evening here. We had a caller towards the beginning, and she was telling us that she's about 19, and she did not care about anything, did not care about other people, um, had a hard time caring. What would you say to someone like that who has a hard time caring? No, you can't make anybody care, you know. You, they have to find something to give a shit about, you know. Something has to be important to them. You know, I mean, not caring is kind of a mental illness, man. It's just a self-centered way of life. And some people get stuck in it, man. They find safety and security in it, man, because they don't want to trust anybody else. And if they care about somebody else, that leaves them open to get hurt and shit. You know, it's, you know, it's a scary thing. So it sounds like to me your solution to that was that you ended up finding something that you cared about. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't find it. It kind of found me, you know. It's, you know, it's... I mean, you know how accidental pregnancy works, man. So, sure, sure. No, it was just, it was just an eye opener for me, man. You know, I just realized that, holy shit, man, I'm gonna have to take care of this little midget that genuinely needs me, man. And it, you know, it changed my life. How many kids do you have? I have two now. Uh, first, the second second one was an accident. Uh, first. Okay. Cool. How old are they? Uh, my oldest is 16, and my youngest is eight. Oh wow! Okay, sixteen is cool because you can. I feel they're like a real person. Yeah, yeah, man, it's really cool watching them grow. We're actually friends. You can communicate, man. It's really awesome. I see his personality and shit. It's really awesome. Do you have any um, activities in particular you like to do with your son? Oh uh, yeah, he, he gets into art. And when I was younger, I used to write graph a lot, and I got somewhat. Somewhat pretty good. I got put in a couple magazines and shit like that. And awesome. when he got old enough for me to show him and stuff, man, I started showing him. And I told him I'm not cool with him going out fucking up people's shit like I was. But he can, you know, he can draw in black books and inspire himself and find different art and different ways to express himself. You know. Are you still involved uh, as an artist in any way? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't necessarily go out and smash it anymore. If I if I do any kind of getting up, man, nowadays I'm kind of a kind of what I used to hate when I was a kid. But I only really hit legal shit now, man. Because you know, how do I tell my kid I'm in jail for painting somebody else's shit? You know? uh, can I ask what you do for a living? I'm curious. I actually build custom motorcycles, man. That sounds really cool. Are you? Do you like? Is there any artistry in that? Do you like paint them or with graffiti type uh, yeah. designs? I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily paint. Um, my part of the shop is is fabricating and, and giving a lot of idea for design for their bike. Because a lot of guys will come in with money but no creativity, and that's kind of where mm. I come in. That's awesome, man. Um, hmm. Do you is, do you see anything in your son that maybe uh, you had in you when you were sixteen that you didn't like that worries you? Uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of paranoia about my surroundings and shit, but. That came from just not having anybody to talk to, man. And he has somebody to talk to, so and you know he can he can be completely honest with me, man. Even if he's gonna get in trouble or whatever, I, you know he knows he can trust me. So yeah, he you know he, he has all those little little traits I used to have, you know. But you know he's got somebody to talk to. That's the difference. That's awesome. And um, are you married? Uh, I was, and thank God I'm not anymore because that was fucking hell. Mm. Uh, are you single now? Are you dating anyone? Oh uh, yeah, I got a girlfriend now, man. She's fucking, she's pretty awesome. Kind of rejuvenated cool. my game shit about girls, man, which is pretty cool. Do the kids like her? Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's number one, man. If the kids don't get along with her, no matter how much I like her, dude, she's out. Hmm. She's Seems first. like you got a, you got a good life, man. You got you got some good stuff going on. You know, yeah, I feel yeah, like man, you're a, 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 a good success story for uh, you know uh, uh, a lot of people. I mean, because you're uh, how, how old are you? If I can ask. I am, I'm, I'm actually 40 now, man. It's fucking crazy saying it out loud, but I'm 40 now. Hell yeah. See, that's cool to me because, you know, we've had, you know, fuck, I know it's awesome because I love, I love having like, you know, younger callers and older callers in the same uh, thing because, you know, we had that girl earlier who was like, I don't care about anything. I don't care about anything. And it's like, you know, it's, it's cool to see how you can evolve from, you know, not caring about anything or having had, you know, um, uh, uh, a shitty past or anything into you know having a a, a pretty good life and um, a family I mean, and I, a thing you enjoy doing. I'll tell you right now, if she was if she was claiming that she didn't care so much and trying to convince people, that means she probably does care about something. She definitely doesn't want anybody to know though. Hmm. Well, listen, man, it, was a, it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, you too, man. It's nice to meet you, Kika. Yeah, did you have a good rest of the night? You too, bro. Call from Tim. Tim, baby. What up? Not much. What's up with you? What uh, What are you doing right now, Tim? I'm reading uh, I'm reading the chat and listening to your stream. You're reading anything good going on in the chat? I hope you're not reading chat right now. But no, when you were, was anything was anything interesting happening? Uh, not much. People are just being mean to other people. That's what goes down. You think so? You know, here's what I... You know what I'll, I'll say about that is that I often... I've done this before, actually. I've, I have Sometimes I'll go back and I'll rewatch my VODs because I'm, I'm curious. You know, I, 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 I do... You know, I don't, I don't read the chat a whole lot when I'm on the phone. So, you know, I'll, sometimes I'll go back and I'll read it in, in the VODs. But um, I'll sometimes... I've done this before. I'll count. I'll watch the chat and I'll count. Um, the comments in -hmm. terms of like, uh, okay, that's a good one. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's neutral. That's neutral. That's mean. That's neutral. That's nice. That's nice. That's mean. That's mean. And I'll count them and I'll be like, okay, what's, you know, I would, there's gotta be some sort of, I I feel like I'm in the process of developing some sort of mathematical equation for this, where you could just plug in a VOD and you can get a number, like a score of how nice your chat is. That would be interesting. But Use like Honestly, a when use I like run an the HTML numbers, scan or something. Say that again. Use like a scanner on your uh, your chat or something. Yeah, some. I mean, I don't have this. I'm just saying this would be an interesting thing to be invented. Some sort of chat scanner that could. Because the the hard part of that is how do you out? I mean, I don't. I'm not a computer person, but how do you get a computer to judge whether or not a sentence is is mean, nice, or neutral? But Probably I, through, machine and my learning small, or something. Yeah, machine learning, something like that. I'll go through in my own... Because, like, if someone is, like... 
Because, like, let's say someone types in, you know, fuck this guy. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, that's a bad, you know, the thing reads fuck, and then it's like, all right, that's bad. But if someone's like, this guy is fucking cool, then that's a good one. But it says fuck. Anyway, I'll go through my own sa sample sizes. I've noticed the chat is major, like, 80% at least, which I think is pretty good. 80%. Pretty positive. You know, but mm -hmm. the thing is, the thing is, I mean, this is just a thing in general. This is a thing in general when you're on the internet and in life. And I mean, the, the mean stuff, it's unfortunately just the way that our brains work. It's so much more potent than the nice stuff. So you notice it more, even if there's less of it. Right. Yeah, no, it's like it sticks out because it's negative, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, and that always bothers me, because then, like, you know, if there's a chat going on, and, you know, th 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 and nine people are being nice, and one of them is mean, you know, people will be like, oh, the chat's being mean, but it's like, no, oh, nine, it's just the one person, but they are, like, harnessing the power of the negativity, which I, you know. Yeah. No, I get you. I hate when I'm promise I'm gonna stop ranting in two seconds, but I hate when like I'll go on I've noticed the thing, I'll go on Twitter and there'll be like a celebrity or some Twitter person like having a public argument with I don't know, let's say it's like fuck Chrissy Teigen or whatever. I'll, I'll use her as an example, like if Chrissy Teigen's having an argument with someone like clapping back at someone who said something mean about her, and then she, she types something mean. And, he's like, and I'm like, you, uh, why you're spending time? And I gotta take my own advice on this, but I'm like, you're spending time engaging with this person that hates you. Meanwhile, you've got thousands of unread DMs that are like, I love you, you're incredible, you're, and you're just you're like, ah, ah, ah this is what I, there's an abundance of that. But you see one mean person, you engage with that. And I'm like, well, why are you engaging with the one bad person? You got all these right. but, the nice people that you just you're leaving on red. Yeah, you're choosing to elevate the one mean part. I never got that. I never stood that on Twitter. Anyway, yeah, there's no reason to focus on the negativity. I guess you're right. Like uh, all the positive thoughts are basically kind of what you should be focusing on and don't be don't be a negative nancy i guess right yeah like if someone someone types at one of these actors like oh your movie sucked and then in a tweet and then meanwhile under that tweet there's 50 different tweets being like that movie's awesome and they never they never type back to the people who say your movie's awesome never goes oh thank you i appreciate that they always go to type the one guy your movie sucks well you sh should you know die anyway how oh. hath you sinned? Uh, my name's not actually Tim, so that's sin, sin number one. But lying, that's a sin. <laughs> yeah, that's number one. Do you have you? Uh, was that the first one? Is or were you a clean slate before you called in? Um, not really a clean slate. I, I don't think anybody is, but um, I don't know. You know, everybody does stuff they don't. They don't really want to do i guess it's like it's hard to think about the thing like i you know most people don't as long as you live your life and you're happy i guess i don't know like um there's a guy that called in earlier that said you know he's religious and you know i i agree as well i'm i'm i consider myself slightly religious but i think um to a certain point you know like um i think you know as long as if that helps you that's awesome like i, I love that idea I love the idea that, like, if you can think about something that made somebody else feel bad and you can you can get that off your chest, hopefully it's, you know, making recompense with somebody else um, that you've wronged. I think that's the best way to go about life. Mm -hmm. Not to steer around the conversation, but um, I don't think I've done too much wrong recently. I think, you know, maybe, you know, doing this, the, you, you speed every once in a while or whatever. Well, Tim, um, listen, you, you, first of all, your name isn't Tim. So mm -hmm. you lied and lying was your sin. Do you lie often? Uh, no, I don't think so. And this is rare for you to lie. Do you remember any lies that you've told in the past before the one you told this evening? Which, by the way, you know, you came clean about the lie pretty quick. I feel like... This was only, I mean, in terms of lie points, 
you probably get back 75% of your lie. So you've probably committed mm -hmm. about 25% of a lie because you came clean about the lie almost immediately. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a long con lie. You didn't have, you, you didn't, you didn't really build any compound interest on that lie. Mm -hmm. So you're a clean slate. You're getting into heaven. How are you excited? Uh, no, I don't think that's always true. You gotta, there's always things that you gotta, you know, was it, uh, confess or whatever before you get to heaven so i don't know there's, there's, there's always things and things in life you regret doing you know see that's i'm not gonna get into heaven because if you're telling me that it takes if to get into heaven all you have to do is not kill people i'm getting in but if you have to take act hopefully i'm getting in <laughs> as long as you don't uh, kill somebody yeah you're getting in yeah, well, if I, I mean, I drive a car, yeah. so every day yeah. I could theoretically end up killing there someone accidentally. Um, you know, I mean, I text and drive. Well, everyone's texting. I play. I play Flappy Bird while I'm driving because I get bored. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I don't actually. I play Doodle Jump, and uh, you know, so I could kill someone. But for now, I haven't, so I'm good. Um, but if you have to do anything, act. If you have to actively do good things. Or actively pray to God. I'm not. I'm not getting it. I'm. I'm. I'm too lazy for that. Even if it's all. Even if it's all of eternity, and I only have to do it. I'm. I'm not getting in. But I haven't killed anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, listen. Thank you for. Um, I. 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 I'm not gonna lie. I did about. I. I talked over you. I talked for the majority of this. How, no, that's you, all right. How do you feel about that? I'm I'm feeling like I made you feel better, which is you know always good. I mean, you know I think I think you did you did spread wisdom. I think uh, that you know t most of what you've said it sounds like it's it's sinking in for a lot of people. People are listening, so um, I think I think it's a good conversation. If if the end of the conversation is enlightenment, then I think that's I think we did a good job here. Do you disagree? Do you want to challenge me on anything I've said? I invite it openly. Because I mean, I this would be it'd be terrible if I was allowed to just go on without anyone challenging anything I've said. Then I could just say, you know, what terrible things all the time. No, I I mean, I don't know how I'd challenge what you said. I mean, most of the stuff is pretty logical. I think, like uh, you know, don't murder people. I mean, <laughs> like to challenge you on that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, you like could, uh, but... <laughs> make me a bad person, you know. So um, I would I would think so. Well, listen, you know, only get can judge. There you go. I want to give a shout out. My, shout my buddies, out my buddies in the uh, the chat room, um, Quindley for Nort and my Skeddy Snacks. You know, those guys, those guys keep me sane. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're feeling sane, Tim, and I appreciate you calling in. Thanks, my guy. You have a wonderful rest of the night. You too, Gek. Therapy.